This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jyoti. Hello, Kunagar. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you? I'm yeah. doing good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. So today we thought of discussing synchronization, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions uh, for the previous sessions or something? Oh, no, actually, I found I had it out, but then I Googled, I got it. Okay, about the JDBC, you are aware of JDBC? Just that it's connection, right? Yeah. yeah. To the database. Right. And right. We have some four uh, drivers all bridge driver, native driver, tin driver, and one more. Right, wonderful, wonderful. So you have worked with the JDBC as well, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, like operations you have done, insertion deletions or something? Any yeah, yeah. I guess insertion deletions I've done. So what about Ivo classes? Uh, the input output stream? Yeah, yeah, I've done. So, uh, okay, that's okay, fine. Synchronization, basically, why do we go for synchronization, uh, Jyoti? So, um, what do you know? I mean, uh, servlets and JSPs, you are aware of them? So, uh, yes, I am, but I might want to revise once. Okay, because Core Java almost, uh, you know everything. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. So, right, that's okay. And servlets and JSPs also, you have knowledge or? Uh, uh, yeah, I, sh I should I should revise once like it's been long so servlets and what is one more thing you are asking for? JSP, JSP, Java server. 
uh, if you can give me today i can go over and you know tell you tomorrow if i want revision i guess okay. i should be fine but still i want to go over once right right okay so what is the synchronization jyoti uh, when we want to do only one process at a time then we might want to use synchronization so that the data is not uh, incorrectly worked okay. like race conditions or something we try to use synchronization for some okay. share for sharing the resources okay so how do you apply synchronization um, creating crit uh, critical sections allowing only one thread at a time by locking the resources when one is using okay so synchronization we can apply at uh, uh, method level and at a block level and uh, at uh, and there is also called the third type that is uh, static synchronization so we will be talking about synchronization with method block and uh, uh, static synchronization mm -hmm. so what is a uh, method level synchronization when you have some, some resource let's say one class uh, let's say like uh, uh, table is a class or else uh, some other uh, yeah a table is a class and this table is a normal class and this table is a normal class where I have uh, some method uh, print table method and uh, my I'm creating my thread uh, there is one class another uh, my thread class and this is a, a thread class because I'm extending a, it as a thread so that it is a thread class fine and this my thread uh, want to access uh, or taking a copy of a uh, need an object of my thread i am taking a, uh, i'm passing it as a parameter to the constructor that means uh, my thread has a dependency on uh, uh, dependency on what do you say table Thank and this we call it as a has a relationship when you are not directly creating mm -hmm. you are creating an object or uh, if you are not extending directly any class then or else you are getting by a copy of that as a parameter if you are passing it or you are creating any object of in any other methodology any method that is called has a relationship now we are performing has a relationship between my thread and uh, table t okay so uh, and this is a thread class and uh, i'm telling that public void run and t dot uh, print uh, table so that means this thread uh, is going to act on my table is going to access this uh, general is going to act my on java class mm -hmm. that's fine now there is another thread uh, my thread 2 and uh, this is also going to act on a uh, table t uh, i mean the same table so when i say i'm creating two objects in my application and i'm starting both of uh, thread objects so first i need a thread object obviously i'm passing the same thread object the same thread object to my thread uh, uh, t1 and t2 are you getting me mm -hmm. so my thread two different thread classes which needs a thread object so they are working on that and when i call t1 dot start and both the uh, current classes are threads and these threads are trying to access uh, one object one yeah. seat they both are uh, starting and when the both are started so both we we are not uh, we we cannot guarantee the output uh, who's gonna come who's gonna get it that first one so let's say the first thread is going to act on it as it has started first and it's going to come and it's going to access but uh, unfortunately here he has written a sleep method so yeah. uh, here we have some sleep method that means this uh, it wait for four seconds i mean it sleeps yeah. for four seconds yeah. So it is going to uh, before it is going to complete task. It is going to go sleep for four four seconds. So uh, what happens is when it is going to get a chance of four seconds, so the other thread is an action. It immediately it will get into a chance and it will execute the task. So I should make sure that uh, there should not be any interruption between these two two threads. So how should I make sure? To make sure that I need to synchronize a, a method of that particular class. So which class? which object you are accessing which object you are accessing that object i need to make it as synchronized 
So which object class method I'm asking uh, table class method I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, um, accessing so that uh, this method must be synchronized. I can apply the synchronization at method level at block level at a at a method level block level and there is a, something static. called static synchronization. Hmm. Static synchronization at method Instead level. We using synchronization. We can use join also. Then yeah. Also, yeah. Yeah. Join is something. Uh, yeah, join is uh, something that is better to use. Uh, uh, like, uh, what do you say? Uh, I mean, it is one thread. Uh, one thread. It, this is for thread to thread. You can make a thread to thread join. But here, are you getting me? Here, this code I have to write it thread to in between thread to thread. But this is my generalized object. Yeah. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is my generalized object I want to, uh, and this generalized object has been accessed by my thread classes. I can apply joins uh, for the thread classes. If they are uh, thread one to thread two, I would like to give uh, some uh, some permissions. Here I have to maintain over here. It has to join after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if it's so it is it is some point of view that is fine but what if i have 100 100 objects are trying yeah, to access then it will be a problem yeah okay so every time we cannot set the join so instead of that if we better if we synchronize the method so that it will be easier for us yeah. so that's the reason we are synchronizing this method now what happens is the synchronized keyword has some backend functionality to make sure that uh, who has come first so that means for the first one whoever it may be if it is the first one it puts a lock for the first person and uh, if it is the next one so it puts a lock for the second uh, first person so whoever it may be if t is the first t2 so that means it makes sure that uh, there should not be any time. okay there should not be any ambiguity it makes sure that and mm -hmm. who joins first uh, is the first one to take it out mm -hmm. so that's the reason we have an accurate result so that's a problem with the what do you say if you don't apply the synchronization now synchronize the method by anonymous class uh, what is this synchronization any idea synchronization with method a body method by using anonymous class so we have a class and uh, same way we have synchronized the method and but we have We have a normal method. Okay. And uh, this is synchronized method by using anonymous class. To avoid coding, I hope. So here we are writing thread one, thread two. Two threads we are creating. Why then? How did it open? Table of five print table of house. Okay, so directly uh, the anonymous uh, we are directly providing uh, to that thread object. Well, can I get the execution flow for this? First, we go to public static void main, and then the it is final the table object we have created it as final after that it directly comes to t1 dot start right after the object is created or it will go to that thread t1 how will the execution flow go after that object is created yeah so uh, this is uh, one uh, uh, it comes in a uh, normal way so here it is creating a normal uh, thread object and after that what we are doing is we have to provide we have to call uh, we have to provide implementation if i start as per the execution uh, t1 dot start is compulsory so where is my t1 dot start so t1 is an object reference of this class so that means it will call this anonymous class and yeah, where so you are providing t1 dot start and then it will go to the run method right the invocation very rare case we'll use Okay. Here he is showing an example, but we don't use any anonymous classes. Okay. But why we have to? Uh, generally, the classes will access the object. 
so, so five or six cla different classes can access the object let's say different persons can access the seat so they are objects so, so it is not uh, uh, the class uh, i mean anonymous we have he's showing but it is not required okay that's what i meant okay so synchronization block level if i apply a method level if i have some 20 lines of code out of only three lines of code is only required for the synchronization it's something like i need a security for only one room where i have stored some something which is important so it is not necessary to lock all the rooms together so yeah. synchronization applying method level is the same way if i apply synchronization at method level for a whole code i'm applying maybe 20 lines or 30 lines of code it may contain for those entire 30 lines of code i'm applying means the performance issue will be coming mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. that's the reason what we do is we'll go for a block so block level is always uh, suggestible okay yeah. and if you thought of a uh, required uh, for a complete method then go for a complete method level and if you have a small piece of code which is a uh, which is a uh, only applied for that particular code then go for that synchronized block level you will create a block synchronized and you want to apply for the current one whoever it may be so that's the reason you will keep this so in the print table i may have some 20 lines of code but we don't have any other of other code um, so here this synchronized block is going to focus on uh, this uh, uh, what do you say a printing table uh, and here it ends mm. Yeah, so that uh, what happens is we are not applying for the entire method. So if it is not required, better not to go for method level, better go for a uh, block mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the remaining code is uh, as it is. Okay, so every time we don't create a two objects, we'll be accessing. I have hundreds of, I have 50 objects or 50 persons uh, sit. 50 person sit and they'll access that means 50 objects should be created so in that case in that case what will happen the synchronized method or synchronized block uh, synchronized block is not uh, suitable there is something else i need to do so if i have two threads i have created and if i make one that object uh, uh, these two threads are trying to access one object uh, that's okay fine uh the the t1 and t2 getting understanding so that uh, t1 completes the task uh, t2 has to wait so this is fine because they both are accessing a single object what uh, if uh, uh, t3 and t4 asking uh, create ha has an access of uh, the other object two object two so that means still it is the same class still it is the same class both are trying to access that uh, that class so then only synchronization is not suitable so in that case, the static synchronization is finally applicable. So static and uh, method level we have to apply synchronized and static. So that what happens is, so how many method, how many classes it may be? I have one, two, three, four, or hundred classes also. These hundred classes are trying to access uh, uh, the object, which object uh, that uh, thread object. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this uh, hundred classes are trying to access uh, this table object. When I say t1 dot start, what will happen? So okay, obviously it calls the run method. Run, run method means it is going to call table dot table, print table table. Number one. and because that method, that method I have declared it as a static one. That method is a static one means uh, that uh, that same copy I'm taking. So it will understand that uh, four or five people are coming into picture. It understand that okay, I'm a static. Uh, I can only give a one copy, okay? So, uh, so it makes that, and it is also synchronized. It is one copy, and it is also a synchronized. So it will allow one person first, and uh, the remaining classes or the remaining objects must and should have to wait. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's what is the final point uh, uh, here. We would like to say so static synchronization when you have more objects are trying to access every time we don't create one or two objects there are multiple objects are trying to access a single object so better to keep that particular method as a static and synchronous so that uh, all the objects will come into understanding they'll say that okay that is a say, static method and that too it is a synchronized we cannot access that class okay that method 
because that already has a copy uh, and it has been loaded at the time of uh, at the time of uh, uh, class loading itself so we cannot access we cannot duplicate it so let us access the same make sense mm -hmm. that's the reason we'll go for a static synchronization most probably so same example of static synchronization by anonymous anonymous we don't require synchronized block on a class lock block on class lock now comes deadlock static void print table table dot class so what is deadlock when the deadlock will happen so when the thread B is having a resource which is being logged by thread b and thread b wants a resource which is logged by a, like cross then no thread can execute that leads to deadlock okay that's it so probably when it may happens the, the deadlock situation when both try to uh, when both want some resources which are being logged by alternate thread yeah. so okay so here so, what happens is uh, you may be using a nested synchronization nested synchronization uh, we'll be having some of uh, your nesting synchronization you're doing a nesting t1 tries to uh, lock t1 is an uh, tries to uh, tries to lock uh, resource one then resource two so both and it, it is waiting for the um, for uh, t1 to complete and uh, resource one to complete or else I have when basically deadlock will happen when you have nested synchronization. Okay. Resource one and resource two. So here what we are doing is we have created one class. We can create a, a could do with normal example also, but uh, uh, string is also a class. That's the reason he's showing with that. And string by default it's the final and resource one is equal to some values that resource two is equal to some values that fine. And now what I'm doing is as it is a main method, I'm creating a thread object. Fine. And it is an anonymous way of implementation we are doing. Okay, what we are doing, we can write it to our public void run method somewhere else. In the run method, what I'm doing is I'm synchronizing and I'm passing my resource one. That means uh, uh, onto the class, this synchronized, uh, I'm applying to the class. Uh, I mean, this is one class. This is one object, one object, uh, I mean an object type it's an object type okay so let's say I have some bus the bus ticket the bus seat those uh, the bus seat is uh, the number one uh, and the number two uh, uh, like let's say 30 and 30, 31 so 30 uh, one resources are acting in 30 and another is acting in 31 so they have an, an interconnection okay we are making by synchronization so once after that it has to access the next one here what happens is both are trying to uh, access that the same uh, the, the resource one to be completed and the resource two to be completed but here in the same in that case uh, we are maintaining both have been synchronized so here the problem comes synchronization nesting when you do nesting it leads to deadlock so that's the reason we should have to avoid deadlock nested synchronization should not be applied are you getting me yeah try this uh, one example and yeah, uh, sure. okay and this inter thread communication how do we do the communication between the threads we have to use uh, the methods wait notify notify, notify. all so they make uh, uh, we can make the thread communication sleep uh, is there uh, but sleep is not telling under inter thread communication so is a mechanism which thread is passed uh, running in its critical section and another thread is allowed to enter 
or a lock in the same critical section. Notify. So wakes up the sleeping or uh, wakes up the thread which is in uh, waiting. So that is notified. Notify all, all the threads which are in uh, waiting. So when I have multiple threads, so then uh, I have to notify all the threads. So this this is basically for the waiting threads we use notify. If it is a single thread, I'll use notify method. If I have multiple threads are waiting, I need to use notify all. But to sleep method is different one. Sleep method automatically wakes up when the time yeah. complete. Mm -hmm. Press enter acquire lock. Lock is acquired by on thread. Now the thread goes waiting state if you call wait method. Difference wait method releases the lock. Sleep method doesn't release the lock. It is the method of the object class. It is the method of the thread class. Sleep is a method of thread class. It is non-static. Okay, it's the static method. Sleep method is a static method. Okay. It's a non-static and it's a static. Should we Notify compulsory. We have to say notify or notify after specified amount of time. Sleep is completed and it will come into action. So how do you interrupt a thread? So we would like to interrupt a thread by using interrupt. Public void interrupt, interrupted is interrupted. But generally we don't interrupt a thread. Yeah, is very yeah. clear. Yes, we don't do. If any thread is sleeping or waiting state, calling the interrupt method on the thread breaks out the sleeping or waiting state and throwing interrupted exception. So if the sleep thread is the sleeping or a wait method, then if we call interrupt, so it uh, it breaks a sleeping or waiting time and it uh, goes, it leads to immediately interrupted exception. Mm -hmm. We don't do manually interruption. So if at all, if you want to interrupt, you can use that interrupt method. Mm -hmm. Re-entrant monitor. Have you ever seen this re-entrant monitor? Mm -hmm. Java monitors are re-entrant. Means Java thread can reuse the same monitor for different things. If this is called from. Public, we have a class re-entrant and some class. We have a method M and synchronize we're saying and we're saying M and uh, M inside we are calling M. So that means M is called first and then M is called basically maybe. We entrant accepts in this class M and N are synchronized methods. The M method internally calls the N method. Now let's call the method uh, on a thread in the class given below. We are creating a thread using anonymous class. Okay, so Java IO. What is uh, uh, the difference between stream and uh, um, stream classes and uh, general uh, writer and reader? The difference between writer and writer. I thought stream. It's a stream is like a sequence of characters, and we use them to read or write. I'm sorry. Stream itself is like uh, it's a sequence of bytes, and then the read and write we use on the stream, right? Okay, it's a flow of characters basically. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there, there is some difference basically. What it, what it is? For the read and write. Yeah, it is basically based on bytes. Your stream is nothing but bytes based. It takes, it talks about byte based data. 
all uh, input and output streams related to bytes and uh, whereas your file reader and reader and writer classes based on characters are you getting me mm -hmm. so it is based on character based data we have so many classes yeah want... yeah yeah Hello. yeah yeah when you asked me to read about predefined stream then i read there are so many classes in output stream and input stream all the data input stream pushback input stream all the classes yeah they have con some connectivity common connectivity just uh, whenever you're free you can go ahead so basically output stream is my class for uh, all the stream classes under that i have file output byte array output filter output if i want to filter some data filter output pipe output object output and uh, filter output stream has buffered and data output stream and uh, print stream mm -hmm. each and every class has some purpose in the same way input stream class also has connectivity uh, one by one we have to see what is a file output stream class which is a director subclass of a, a output stream class and it contains some method so we would like to write some data we would like to write what way what kind of data we would like to write there is some differences some simple simple differences we have so wait if i want to write a byte array byte data byte array output streams if i want to read a direct byte based data byte array input stream like that data output stream and data output input stream we would like to class allows application to write primitive java data types to the output stream we would like to write the primitives when you want to write a primitive java data types to the output stream then you can use a data output stream why filter output stream when you want to, uh, to provide what is that to provide additional functionality buffered output stream to the buffered filter output stream class implements output stream class it provides a different subclasses buffered and data output stream yeah it is a super class for uh, uh, filter output stream is a super class for buffered and data if it is a primitive related data output stream yeah. if it is yes. a buffering data if you want to keep it then uh, you have to use buffered inputs output stream buffered mm -hmm. inputs so there are slight differences basically yeah. we would we have to see everything is almost doing the same but small small some some reads the data faster some reads in bytes some reads multiple lines something like that basically it's right. reading and writing but the way it is going is different in each thing right 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 so have a look into that and uh, see that and you know what is a scanner scanner is something which uh, will allow you to read directly uh, values we don't need to uh, type cast it or something the data from the in next in yeah. uh, next all uh, there are some method next uh, float uh, next uh, so if you want to read any kind of data directly you can read it we don't need a buffer reader or anything direct text if you want to read it from the console you can read it so previously we used to write buffered input stream um, mm -hmm. so then we have to read uh, uh, from a system dot in so there are some processes that new input stream reader i need to connect input stream reader and then buffered input stream reader. but here simple way in a single class we can read the data and coming to the mm -hmm. major important thing that is uh, serialization very important what is a serialization and a deserialization? This is very important in Java. We have one interface called a serializable. So serializable is nothing but uh, to tell this object is uh, we are going to write serializable is a marker interface. That means it contains no methods or we call it as final final uh, uh, I think final uh, classes. Uh, I mean, uh, no, sorry, that is immutable. Sorry, marker interface means um, an interface which contains no method. But mm -hmm. just to understand, just to understand that it is, we are going to serialize it. Suppose I have created a student class, and this I'm saying that it is serializable. It doesn't mean it means that we are writing an object data to a file. This object I would like to write it to a file. I have to write it to file. That's the reason I'm saying implements 
serializable. Okay, this is my normal class. In future, I'm going to serialize it. That's the meaning of it. Now, what I have to do for that? What should be, I'm going to do that. So that student object, this object, I have to write it to what? To a file. To this file, if okay. I want to write it, I'm going to use a file output stream. And uh, to file output stream, I'm attaching to this file. After getting the file, write the object. What is that S1 object? So to do that, I need a first object output stream. I need to attach to this file. I have a file. Before that, uh, I'm telling to the file, hey, I'm going to store the object. So give me the object uh, output stream connectivity. So on the file uh, output stream, it got object output stream connectivity. Now you are ready to push this object. That's it. Mm -hmm. So creating a stream and uh, writing the object. So we are created the stream in this two step and we are reading that object and flush it. So make sure uh, there should not be anything in these pipelines. But even if we don't do anyways, the garbage collector will do it for us, right? Basically, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is not, uh, it is not talking about uh, uh, removing the objects. Flush will not talk about the object removing. It is uh, make sure that uh, it is going to uh, from the stream output stream. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Make sure that. Out dot close system dot out dot printer. So this is the way you can use this uh, serialized object. Mm -hmm. So now I have to read a see uh, right object uh, uh, which I've been uh, the serialized object. Serialized object means just I have written written an object to my file. That's it. Now that object uh, I wanted to that object I wanted to read it. Uh, to from the file to I wanted to read that object and might be I would like to print it in console or somewhere else I would like to get the data for some purpose that means I need an object which has been serialized that means that is you are going to deserialize it first you have written an object to a file that is called serialize now you are going to uh, get that object uh, uh, and that is called a deserialization from a file. Getting an object uh, from a file is nothing but deserialization. Okay. okay, so how do you get it? So you have a file previously to write it, we have used output stream. To read it now, we have to use the input stream. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So object input stream in the single line, we, we can write it. Directly we are writing. New file input stream, I'm writing and uh, I'm getting that uh, object in. In and on the in read that object and I would like to make sure that uh, I, I, the file may contain some 10 or 50 objects but I won't make sure that student object that's the reason in dot read object and student time sign. that's it so printing the data of the serialized object now whatever I got the object or whatever you would like to do you can do so we are printing the values just that's it hope you got it what is the serialization and deserialization Mm -hmm. Object to a stream, stream to an object. Converting mm -hmm. an object to a stream is nothing but serialization. Converting a stream into an again into an object is nothing but a deserialization. To make sure that any class is going to be serialized, we are going to say implement serialize. That means we are telling that directly, I'm going to write this object to your file. That's it. Okay, when it is when it has inheritance. Okay. Hmm. Person is implementing serializable interface. So student is extending. That means this is superclass is serializable means obviously subclass is also serializable. 
-hmm. Okay, you got it right. Mm -hmm. That is about uh, serialization and okay. There is another thing called transient keyword. Anytime uh, you got it, uh, what do you mean by transient keyword? Transient, if you say we don't want to serialize, we just mention that uh, that particular uh, that particular uh, ID value or something out of that. I don't want to write it. Uh, I don't want to convert uh, it to uh, or it will not be. We are we will, we will not send it to send it to the stream. We are, we don't want to send it to as a stream. Then you can say. Uh, you can say that is transient id will not be serialized so when you deserialize uh, the object uh, after serialization you will not uh, get the value of id because in that uh, we are not writing particular value are you getting me i'm sending all the data but only one uh, variable or something i don't want to send it to that uh, file so then what i'll do is i'll make it as a transient the purpose of transient is we would not we don't want to store the value to that file if that is if that is not there in the file in the next time when you are reading the data from the file so it will not give that particular value because it is not available in the file itself make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, like, version ID. So only variables can be serialized, not the method. I think, yeah, method cannot okay. be said. I have declared a class student. Uh, it has uh, three data members. Name. If you serialize object, uh, all the values will be serialized. But I don't want to serialize the value. Transient. We cannot use. Uh, let's create a class variable. Only for the method. Either that's only for the member, not for the methods. So okay, this is about your selection and uh, uh, what is it? Transient keyword. Any questions on this, uh, Jyoti? Oh no. You don't have any queries? No. Let uh, just give me it, please. Mm -hmm.
I'm sorry. Uh, so I was talking about uh, uh, what do you say collections. Uh, so you got some idea about collections? Yeah, yeah. I, you asked me to read that in second or third class. I've read about it. It's like okay. a framework to store and manipulate like group of objects, like singling. Okay. When you get some objects time, and... Jyoti, mm -hmm. when you get some time, I just wanted you to go through with the synchronization concept and. Uh, yeah, today's uh, class I would definitely go through with synchronization. Uh, I might want to do some examples. Do some examples. Then, Okay. Yeah, I mean stream I have read, but how much ever I read it, it, it's kind of vague. I mean, every same is happening almost. Basically, okay. you're reading the data and you're writing the data. It's just that how internal process goes of reading the data, it it it's changing. So I thought maybe basic idea should be fine instead of learning all those classes. Like there are that's so enough. many classes. That's enough. Uh, streams we don't need to focus yeah. about simulation and simulation. Uh, I will uh, how do you write a data or something whether it is going or not uh, just... for next class okay. and i would go over servlets because servlets is li yeah jdbc yeah. if you are because aware servlets of it is a little long concept right so i just don't want to go over and mm -hmm. yeah jdbc okay. also i'll go through i, it, I guess jdbc I can go. jdbc you can go ahead right you don't have any problem that's why yeah, yeah, uh, so directly shall i start up with the servlets after uh, after collections uh -huh. you're okay with yeah, that right see. and what about the yeah. applets applet and uh, swing mm. so these are all object based applets. they're drag and drops yeah 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 that uh, GUI interface will come. Yes, it only has... GUI based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was just doing one project with that, you know, some small quiz. Okay. So maybe I, the... I can finish. Uh, I'm just doing all the Java swing. So our class will be extending applet and uh, whatever the methods are there. So we can uh, use all those methods. Draw string, uh, draw, rec, rea, rec, uh, file, rec. So all the methods uh, so that uh, is playing image. GUI based completely. Mm -hmm. If you want to develop any GUI based uh, thing, you can work with uh, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, even animations also we have in applets. You, you you are okay with this slide you can work on it you can work on it right hello yeah yeah i'll hello. work on it yeah okay yeah i'll work on it i just need a little time to hello yeah. okay so uh, after collections we'll be discussing uh, java features basically what are the features of java eight features there are uh, some things uh, which is very important. Without Java, eight features we cannot go ahead because it is required nowadays. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So coming to the collections, what do you know about collections and why collections? Uh, like if you want to make the objects into a single unit, then we would use uh, collections. Okay. And. Uh, it can be implemented by uh, like classes. If you say we uh, list, we have array list, link list. Okay. So, uh, how many collection classes we have, and what are the differences? And first of all, collection is a framework. Oh. Uh, it has uh, some yeah. set of classes. And each mm -hmm. class has a specific purpose. And the complete uh, structure of the collection is this. For all the classes and everything, iterable is an interface for all the collection framework. What is that? Mm -hmm. Iterable. Iterable is an interface and uh, collection is extending this interface. Mm -hmm. Collection is extending this interface and uh, list is an extending uh, collection interface. 
So we need to know what is iterable contents methods and what is collection interface contents. Iterable contents only, I think, uh, iterator method or iterator method. And your collection is an important thing, which contains uh, near about uh, eight, 19 methods. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. Iterable is in uh, super interface and all the collection classes are available as part of java.util package. All the collection classes are available as part of a java.util package. Iterable and collection and list queue set. So under the list, we have four classes. Array list, link okay. list. So array list should be a class. Uh, array list is a class. Basically, it is a non-synchronized that means it is not thread safe and the linked list is also non synchronized but vector is a synchronized uh, that means it is a thread safe okay array list the only difference between array list uh, uh, all the list items will allow will allow duplicate values mm -hmm. so you know the terms and uh, conditions of them right each and every by default, all the list elements will allow dupl duplicate values. All the list mm -hmm. interface will. Yeah. And uh, follows uh, uh, insertion order. Insertion order means what is the order you have stored the same way it will retrieve the values. And uh, yeah, that is the main thing in duplications and insertion. And null values are allowed. Null values are allowed. And coming to the each and every uh, a class, array list is uh, containing duplicate and nouns. Insertion order follows, and see, and uh, array list class is a uh, non-synchronized. As I told you, out of four classes, mm -hmm. in fact, only one class is synchronized from this list. Vector is only synchronized. Mm -hmm. Array list allows a uh, random access because a uh, array works at the index basis. So the data structure, every class has a backend data structure. Every class has backend data structure. For the array list, uh, the implementing data structure is uh, arrays. The array list uh, data structure implements backend arrays. Mm -hmm. Do you need any example or uh, you're okay with this? No, I'm fine. I've, I've done a few examples with the array list actually. So you know generics? Uh, I just need to brush up once. So, add, uh, so when you are uh, adding the data or something, uh, you have a chance to set the type. That is called a generic. Generic describes about the type. It might be any primitive type or it might be some class type. We can add such a kind of data, a class type of data also I can add. If I say I can restrict this class to add only students uh, kind of data. I can restrict my classes with the student uh, data. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. I can create a student class and I can say that class should take only student related uh, student related data. Let's say a class I have. So this dot s underscore id, I have created a constructor. Now I wanted to add all the collection elements, uh, student objects to my class. How would I mm -hmm. add that? So here, instead of a st 
string, I will be saying student. So that means this array list okay. in future is going to take only student type of objects only. Okay. So how can I add an object? I can say add an object of a new keyword directly. I can pass it here student and I can give the data. I can give the data uh, saying that student has uh, two values that is name, name. and uh, something uh, something that's it in the same way i can add the i can create a, a number of objects and uh, and then so all the list all the elements will be added to the list Hope you are aware of uh, this kind of mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. You're okay with this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. So after that, uh, I have a couple of ways to print it. So the direct way is uh, I can give the list. So I add the added list, I can print it. Or the other ways, I can use. Uh, what is the other ways to retrieve the values, Jyoti? For uh, for each loop. Or by using iterator, I can use for each loop, or I can use iterator to retrieve the value. Mm -hmm. are, you getting, are you getting me? Mm -hmm. You are aware of it how to retrieve a value using iterator, right? Yeah, I just I remember I have seen one example, but I have not done double for each and for one compact iterator. But iterator is also same like uh, accessing a list directly if you give yes, some list yes. of elements iterator uh, it goes through each and every element uh, iterator uh, dot has next and next element yeah. so this is one way and the other way is for each loop the list i have to give and yes. here what is the type if it is a student type i have to maintain the student type and then say print this is another mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. so these are the three ways what we have So array list is not suitable for manipulations. It is only suitable for insertions. Okay. Why it is not suitable for manipulations? Because uh, it will not it will not uh, it will not uh, store the information about uh, previous values or something. If I remove any one item, so the entire list, uh, the entire uh, uh, as it is following array. So the entire index number will be adjusted, but linked list is suitable for manipulations. Manipulations in the sense uh, insertion, deletion, updation. So which one is best one it means if they ask you, anyone ask you linked list because linked list uh, will not work on based on only arrays. It works on uh, two way or doubly linked list we call. That means it uh, contains the information of a previous element and also the element of the next element so the, the also the element of the next element so that's that, that's the reason that's the reason linked list is best for uh, manipulations insertion or deletion can be done at any point of view and it can go both the direction forward directions and backward direction also but the list uh, array list will go in only one direction and i can add uh, at any place uh, that I, uh, I can add the elements these many advantages we have with the linked list comparing to array list. If you have only just to add the elements, then go for array list. If you want to go for manipulations, then go for linked list. We can convert a, an, a, one list type into another list type. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. We can convert one list type into another list type. And the list type. Any list we can convert. Array list type we can convert or we can convert to vector also. Make sense? You want mm -hmm. me to show, uh, give an example on this? No, no, I've seen that example in this only T point. So array list versus linked list to just go through it. It's very important. Very, very important. Okay. And uh, coming to the vector, as I told you, the major difference between all the classes of the, that one is vector is a synchronized one. Because that implements threads. 
So no one uses vector uh, because when you have a shared resource, then only go for like book, booking a tickets or something else. When you have such kind of information, then only go with the vectors. Otherwise, don't go for it. And uh, okay. vector, if you see, it has some structure. The tree structure vector class and comma. So a uh, vector is something which is going to which is going to get a list. Uh, linked list is has two things. One is a it is implementing list interface and also it is going to follow queue. Queue means you know what is a queue and stack? First in first out. Queue means first in first out. Stack. No, last in first out. Lifo. Okay, so that the difference also mm -hmm. we have to follow. It follows LIFO, last and first out. And uh, mm -hmm. your vector follows, uh, vector also follows first in first out. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it doesn't has anything. Fail fast, I think. Uh, that follows only stack follows uh, the things one minute. Three, four. Yeah, but the linker list follows. Linker list follows as it is implementing queue. Anything which is implementing queue that has before. Okay, mm -hmm. but stack in this uh, four classes stack is the one which is non synchronized, but it follows LIFO last in first out. Mm -hmm. So that means we have a uh, different ways to work on that. We have push, peak, pop, different elements. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so Java stack classes methods implement the stack structure and the Java program before first in before last in first out method. It is going to work on that. So when you go when you would like to go for such kind of operations, last in first out are popping or pushing. A peaking so these kind of operations if you want to go for it then we have to go for stack stack is a class that falls under the collection framework that extends vector class and also implements interface collection iterable iterable by default iterable and uh, also clonable and serializable interface we know what is the serializable and what is clonable clonable means we can create a duplicate class and serializable means we can write that object into so all the Java classes, all the vector classes, all the array, uh, uh, collection classes are serializable and clonable. Please know that. Clonable mm -hmm. and serializable. All the, I think java.util package, a complete java.util package, even date class also. So okay. class constructor, stack new, and you need to see the main methods, empty, push, pop, peak, search. The first element status or the last element status and what is the remote element status all these things if you want to getting to know then go for stack but it is not a synchronized one so you got it to hope uh, what are the four classes what we have yeah and what is it okay give me an uh, any uh, any example project uh, on this for the neg uh, next time give me a, a nice uh, difference uh, between these classes and where to use and what is your understandable tip? Stack and vector, array list and linker list. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we create a customized object, not a normal object, create a custom object. Coming to the set. So under the set, we have hash. The first one is a hash it and a linker hash it and a tree set. Right? So hash it basically follows hashing mechanism, contains a unique. So every set contains only no duplications and uh, will allow null values and is not a synchronized only uh, no synchronized linked asset is also not synchronized tree set is also not synchronized no class is synchronized here so hash it 
is the best approach for such operations because it is going to follow hashing hash based mechanism so it works based on hash hash code it shows based on hash table we have hash code and hash table so duplications no duplications when you give duplicate values it just overrides but it will not show any compile time yeah you know that right mm -hmm. so if you want to retrieve you can have the set dot iterator and the you can have this method or directly you can print that we can convert our list to stack or any other thing by using mm -hmm. we have to create an object and we have to pass that collection name so immediately that is converted into hash now i can add or i can perform now it will become a hash it object if I want to perform some additional, mm -hmm. I can perform. So linked hash it. So it implements both. Uh, it is okay. Linked hash it plus or uh, hash it uh, class and implements also, and it is set set in twice. Uh, class contains unique elements only like hash it. And provides optional set operation permits null elements uh, is not synchronized maintains instruction order because it is linked linked means doubly linked list so it it knows a uh, uh, previous value and the next uh, next level value also it holds the information so that is the difference between uh, linked hash set and the hash set it follows uh, both the hashing mechanism and uh, uh, doubly linked list we call it as two way linking double way linking previous element information and uh, next element information so that's the reason they are best suitable for modifications all the linked related linked list or linked hash set, they are suitable for modifications tree set when you want to perform in sorting order it might be yeah basically uh, higher to lower or lower to higher we have a descending order or ascending order we can perform that is for the pop that is the purpose of uh, toss uh, tree set tree set the purpose of tree set is sorting order so that means uh, here you should make sure that uh, uh, null value should not be there or duplicate value should not be there if you give null value it will not be able to sort it it will not be able to compare the elements that's the reason only tree set will not allow null values and but hash set and linked hash set will allow null values so by default it maintains ascending and it is non-synchronized quite fast like hash it only so just go through them and if you have any questions you can ask me huh? you can see maps on uh, next mm -hmm. session and get back to me okay. if you have additional information if you require please let me know we'll work it. okay okay thank you, mm -hmm. thank you.